maybe you've heard the saying, there is a German word for everything. But today, I'm gonna show you that there are some things that will leave a German speechless. Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. I am Donnie, and along with my wife, Aubrey, we are two Americans currently living in Germany with our baby sharing all of our experiences living and traveling throughout Europe. German is world famous for being able to create words that are roughly a mile long in order to perfectly describe almost anything and any situation. We've done an entire video about words that German has that are completely untranslatable into English, partially because of this ability, but online you can find hundreds of other YouTube videos, blog posts, and websites that describe German words that aren't translatable, but it can be somewhat difficult to find anything on words that exist in English that aren't translatable into German. Well today, I wanna to show you that even with German seemingly having a word for everything, there are just some things Germans can't say. And that's exactly what I wanna talk about today in our video. These can't be distinguished unless spoken in English. Kusak. No, that's not the first word that Germans can't say, but that's the last name of one of the lead roles in the 2001 rom-com Serendipity, or as Germans would know it as, Weil es dich gibt, which is not a direct translation of the English movie title because there is no direct translation of the word serendipity in German. Well. Hollywood movies often change the title of English movies into something German that isn't always a direct translation, even if one exists. But in this case, there is no single word translation of serendipity in German. So what is serendipity? It is the occurrence and development of events by chance in a happy or beneficial way. The first part of that definition could also be the definition of a coincidence, which does have a German translation, Zufall. But what this word is missing is the added little part parts of it being a zufall of a happy or beneficial ending specifically. An example of serendipity could be putting on a pair of pants you haven't worn in years and finding $10 in the pocket. But do any of you guys have a better example of something serendipitous that you know of or has happened to you? Germans love efficiency. And because of that, it really is surprising to me that they don't have a translation for the English word multitasking. Multitasking describes when someone is able to do multiple things at once. For example, if someone is watching this video while hitting the like and subscribe buttons while also sending this video to a friend, they are multitasking. And if we plug this word into a translator to see what it spits out for us, the German translation we get is multitasking. Now, there is a word we haven't discussed yet, and that is Dinglish. Dinglish is just Deutsch and English squished together and is sometimes what we speak when we are out and about trying to speak German, but we fail to come up with some of the words, so we slip the English words that we know into our German sentence. This is also sometimes used to describe when Germans adopt English words and use them regularly as well, so I would like to know if this is an example of that. Is multitasking a word that you've adopted and now would use as if it was German? Without a word like this in German, as far as I can tell, the only other way of telling someone you are multitasking in German would be to literally spell it out in a sentence by saying this translation, which literally means completing multiple tasks in parallel. Or maybe Germans see this as inefficient and want nothing to do with this type of behavior and therefore don't even have a word for this and haven't even adopted the English term. Real quick, for all of our patrons over on Patreon, I wanna say thank you so much for your continued support over the years and helping us continue to bring out videos like these. If any of you aren't patrons of ours yet but would like to know how you can become one, I do have a link in the description where you can check that out. For the rest of you guys, if you wouldn't mind hitting that like and subscribe buttons, I would greatly appreciate the support. But now, let us continue with the video. So speaking of Dinglish, there are a lot of German words that don't have a German translation because German has simply adopted them from English and didn't come up with their own word. So now the English word 
is the German word. You see this a lot with new technology, for example. Laptop in German is a laptop or internet is internet. But there are also some fun ones in which Germans didn't come up with a translation, but they did at least Germanize the words before fully adopting them. Like to Google something would be Googlen. And if you have Googled something, then you have Googled it. But then there are other times when Germans don't have words for something, so they just adopt English words. But the English words aren't even something that English speakers would use in English. An example of this would be when Germans use the word old timer. Of course, in English, these are two separate words, not one like how Germans just randomly smushed together. And in American English, an old timer would be a slightly jokey or rude thing to call an old person. However, Germans took these words and it is what they call old classic cars, not at all all how it would be used in English. But I would be interested from our Germans to know their thoughts on this. Are you indifferent to the adoption of English words into German? Or do you have any concern about the overuse of English phrases replacing, I guess, what could be German words? I'm calling this next section of words the indistinguishables because they are words that without context, you, well, at least I or probably most other American English speakers wouldn't understand what is being talked about because in American English, we have multiple words to distinguish between these very different things in our mind, but in German, you don't. The first has to do with the most important German tradition that the world needs to know about, Kaffee und Kuchen. But this word gets me so confused because there are times when I am told that I will be getting Kuchen and then this comes out. In English, it is very important to distinguish between these two types of desserts, but in German, this isn't very easily distinguished between as there isn't a translation for the word pie that is different from the word cake in German. Now, in my experience, I have sometimes seen where what I would call a pie is called a gedeckte Kuchen, meaning a covered cake in German. Or there's also the word Pastetta, which sometimes will be given as a translation of pie. But my understanding is that this isn't talking about a sweet dessert style of pie, but more of a savory, meaty type of pie. But let me know in the comments, if you were specifically talking about an American style of pie, how would you say this or what would you call it in German? In a recent video, I described one of my favorite garden tools I had never seen before moving to Germany. But that tool isn't what German doesn't have a translation for, it is actually what's behind me that there isn't really a German translation for. Well, okay, there technically is, but based on my history of speaking American English, the translation is very confusing because the area of property behind a house in American English is called a backyard. And therefore, when I was first learning German, I would sometimes say Hinterhof, which I had literally just translated backyard into the German words thinking that would make sense, but turns out it doesn't as one viewer pointed out in one of our videos in which I use this word. This viewer described that Hinterhof refers to a yard in the back of a tenement or office building. The word implies that it is a yard made of concrete and not of plants. So what did Germans call a backyard? Garten. But wait, I thought garten means garden, you might say in your very American accent. And in that case, you are right. But turns out German and British English are in agreement that both the actual property behind a house and place you plant your flowers are called a garden. In fact, I also found a forum talking about Brits calling their property a garden in which one user wrote, and in Britain, if you said your house had a yard or backyard, that would imply that it was concreted or asphalted over, which sounds extremely similar to what our German viewer described the German translation of backyard describing. Now, there are more specific terms for what a flower garden is called in German that you can use to be more specific, but I would like to know, how does this not confuse Germans and Brits? And the most complicated and possibly most dangerous indistinguishable, what is your word for a person not in your family that you have a close non-romantic relationship with in both languages? Now, what is the word for a person you are in a romantic relationship with that you aren't married to? Oh man. If there was ever a word that Germans need to have a distinguishing word for, but they don't and will get you in all sorts of trouble, it's this one. There have been plenty of times that I have been speaking in German, talking about a friend who happens to be a girl, and I use the term Freundin, and then I get giggles because they know I'm married, and then some jokes ensues about my apparent side girlfriend. And this is where I need our German viewers' help in distinguishing how to talk about just a friend who is a girl or a boy, and not to confuse 
speaker into thinking I'm talking about another significant other. My understanding is that it is all based on context and the way you structure the sentence around the word that gives the indication of the status of the relationship to that person. For example, translated, you would basically say a friend of mine to mean just a friend, but you would say translated my friend to mean a romantic relationship. But can our viewers confirm this? Also, can we get behind a movement to add some additional parts to these words to make it even more clear like in English how we have friend or specifically a girlfriend or boyfriend so it is more clear that I am true to just my wife? <laughs> Finally, on the topic of relationships, there is one word that I gather there is no translation for in German, but I want to include it because of how much ridicule I endure when I pronounce the German word knudel, and that is the English word knudel. Yes, I think I pronounced the German word the same way that I pronounced the English word for the most part, and that is where I have my biggest problem with the German pronunciation, but knudel in English means to kiss and cuddle at the same time. All that I have been able to find in German is a word for kissing, kussen, and a word for cuddling, kuscheln, but no German word sums up you doing both at the same time in one word. I guess maybe this harks back to Germans compartmentalizing and not having a word for multitasking because they don't multitask. They keep their kissing and cuddling completely separated and therefore they don't come up with a word for this. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. Why is there no canoodling? in Germany. To see who made it this far into the video, the random question of the week is... Which is your favorite grocery store to shop at? Thanks so much for watching, guys. Be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and I will see you in our next video. And to see who made it even farther into the video, I want you guys to start commenting, how many leaves does this plant have left in our future videos? Because I wonder if some of you guys have noticed that it's very quickly losing all of its leaves might end up just being a stick. We'll see. Dinglish. Dinglish, Dinglish is just butt. Do any of you guys, eh, I wanna redo that.